Hello and good morning. Welcome to today's message, which is going to be based upon Mark chapter 1, verses 29 through 34. If you're new, if you've never been to our online church community before, we are a group of friends who meet together in Irvine, California, virtually. Uh, my name is Tim. I'm a member of staff here. And I just want to introduce to you this concept of Jesus as healer. That is the title for this message, Jesus as Healer. And so just a bit of background for me. I obviously do not come from America. Uh, my accent is a bit of a giveaway. And so I'm English, if you didn't know. And as English people, we this last week have been mourning the loss of Prince Philip. And we will be in a national state of mourning until April 17th. And so sporting events, um, national schedules are being changed right now to accommodate the celebration of his life. And as a country, as a nation, as a people, we are mourning his loss. And so we're looking for healing. We're looking for healing in this moment. And where better place to go than to the Bible and to scripture to receive healing. Now, maybe you're not English, maybe you are American, maybe you're from a different country or nation. And so the healing that you need might be in a different context. Uh, perhaps you need healing from sickness. Maybe you need healing from a past hurt or trauma. Maybe you need healing from an addiction or a pattern of behavior you're not very proud of. Whatever it might be that you're seeking healing from, I just wanna to say to you that there is an answer and that Jesus as healer can bring you hope in this midst of confusion, chaos, illness, infirmity, whatever it might be, in one way or another. And so I just want that to be our prayer today. And unlike other services when we've met, we're gonna to try to encourage, um, it's the first time at least that I'm doing it, uh, us to take a moment before we um, hear the message today to receive communion so that we come into relationship with Jesus, so that we come into um, fellowship with him and we enter into this discussion although I'm speaking I hope that your hearts are hearing and that your hearts are then speaking to God and then you're praying and speaking and in dialogue with him so if you like this is a holy discussion although I'm leading there is multiple messages that are being sent and multiple people involved that are here with us the Father Son and Holy Spirit I invite into this in Jesus name right now amen and so I'm going to turn in my Bible now to Luke 19. Um, if you have your Bible with you, I'd love for you to turn to that so that you can find it. Um, I'm going to read it in the NRSV translation. Um, and I'm going to invite just two verses. And I'm going to ask you to, where you are, grab maybe a piece of bread and some water or some wine, whatever you have, alcoholic or non. And I'm going to read these two verses to you which are in Luke 22, and it's chapter 22, verses 19 and 20. And so why is this significant? Why is it important that we do communion? Um, perhaps it's important because we haven't met together in person in church before. Maybe it's because we're not meeting together in person and we are online. Or perhaps it's because we just want to do this in remembrance of Jesus. And so I very kindly got given a donation as part of my ministry. Uh, I run a ministry called Free and Fit, and our mission is to build community through sports, the arts, outreach and service. And one of the things that we did during the Easter week, Passion Week, was to celebrate communion whilst taking part in sport. And so I was donated very kindly this bread and wine, which is a very simple wafer and grape juice um non-alcoholic i believe and so this is just one way of doing it there is another you may have a, a plate with some bread on and some wine in a glass and you could then have that with you as well and so these are just symbols although they're not necessarily religious it's a spiritual practice to share communion as the disciples did on the passover as jesus did at the last meal at the table he shared his body and blood before his death and resurrection as a symbol that the disciples could take with them into their ministry as Jesus was resurrected. He also declared that this would be a way to do so. Another way is to say peace, 
peace be with you. And we share that together in communion and community as well. And so when we share communion, this is the verses that I would like us to read. And it's chapter 22 in Luke, verses 19 and 20. This is what it says. Then he took a loaf of bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Uh, again, I'm <laughs> interrupted by alarms, which is a, a tooting of a horn. It seems that even when I'm at home in Hoboken, New Jersey, that there is a tooting of a horn. So I'm going to reread that for us because it was alarming, but it's not meant to be. It's meant to be peaceful and so that we can have peace with Jesus. Then he took a loaf of bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Chapter 20. And he did this. The same with the cup after saying, this cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. And so right now where you are, maybe you want to take your wafer if you have it or just your bread. And this is Christ's blood shed for you to keep you in eternal life. And then this is Christ's blood shed for you to keep you in eternal life. So the body and blood of Jesus Christ, his body broken for you, his blood shed for you to keep you in eternal life. And we do this in remembrance of him in Jesus name. Amen. And so I'm going to now return to our passage. Um, I'm going to pray and then I'll read that for us. And I hope this is an encouragement for you as we share communion, as we come together online, either live or on demand, wherever you are. I pray that this is an encouragement to you. And so let me read these verses and then I'll pray for us as we come to receive the word of God. And immediately they left the synagogue and went into the house of Simon, Peter and Andrew accompanied by James and John. These are Jesus's disciples. Now Simon's mother-in-law was lying sick with a fever and immediately they told him, Jesus, about her. Jesus went to her and taking her by the hand, raised her up and the fever left her and she began to serve them as her guests. Now, when evening came after the sun had set and the Sabbath day had ended in a steady stream, they were bringing to him all who were sick and those who were under the power of demons. Until it seemed as though the whole city had gathered together at the door of Simon Peter's house. And Jesus healed many who were suffering with various diseases and he drove out many demons, but would not allow the demons to speak because they knew him, recognising him as the son of God. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God in Jesus name. Amen. And so these verses, this scripture passage is a message for us today, yesterday and tomorrow. It's a passage which speaks of the testimony of Jesus's healing. So let us pray right now for the Jesus that is a healer to come into our conversation and to heal us right now. Lord Jesus, we thank you and praise you that you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we just ask right now that you would come by the power of your Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. We receive you right now, Lord, and ask for your presence to be with us. In Jesus' name, amen. And so this passage is significant for a number of reasons, but the part I want to focus on is that Jesus is a healer. And we see that in many ways here. We see that in the confidence that the disciples have in his ability to heal. Jesus is not shy about providing healing. He is not going to deny the disciples the very gift he was given by God to their immediate family. Simon Peter is aware that his mother is sick and in confidence as his mother-in-law he comes to Jesus 
and he asks for healing, but not through words, but through actions. And in that actions, he shows faith. And it's faith in action that we are told in the Bible that brings light and revelation and hope for our lives. It says in verse 30, now Simon's mother-in-law was lying sick with a fever and immediately they told Jesus about her. So they were in the vicinity, they were in the area and they traveled to Simon Peter's house. And as soon as they arrived, their main priority, the first thing that they sought to do was to heal. They may not have had confidence that they themselves, which they would later be able to do, Simon Peter becomes a person that is gifted with the ability to heal. They believe and trust in Jesus's ability to heal through the Father. And so in verse 31, Jesus went to her and taking her by the hand, raised her up and the fever left her and she began to serve them as her guests. So the, the revelation of healer, Jesus here as healer, is really important because what matters is not that we are immediately healed. Because when we pray to Jesus, it's not always that when we pray that we receive immediate healing. But it's our response. How do we respond to Jesus as healer? And so I just invite us into that concept here right now it can be very disappointing if we believe that every time we pray for jesus to perform a healing miracle that it would happen immediately that's not my experience and for some of you it might be but for me that's not been my personal experience with jesus when i ask for healing it comes sometimes immediately i have experienced that my wife also my wife in her shoulder myself in my left knee at different times in our lives, we've received immediate spiritual healing. So we believe in Jesus as healer. And so right now where we are, we're asking that Jesus would heal us. Perhaps for you, that is in a different way to me. But likewise, I invite as we pray today, as we close, that you would have the trust, the faith and the prayer in action for Jesus to respond. Lord, hear our prayer to the requests that we make known to him today. And so what did Simon do that demonstrates faith? He took his sick mother-in-law to Jesus. He took the problem to the solver. He took the person that was sick to Jesus as healer in faith. Therefore, Simon Peter didn't know the answer, but he knew the person who could provide the answer. And that is the difference. When we go with our problems to different people, perhaps we go to counsellors, mentors, religions or spiritual practices. They're all good, but they're not the healer. Jesus is healer. And so that's why... When Simon Peter went to her, he knew he would get an answer. He had so much faith that he believed that Jesus would answer him there in that moment. And so what's different for us when we ask for prayer is not that Jesus won't do it immediately, but it's our response. Simon Peter demonstrates firstly a response to the problem. He demonstrates to us the faith to go to Jesus. So firstly, we have to go to Jesus. If you're taking notes, if you're writing down, if we have a need, if we have a problem and we seek healing, the first thing we must do is go to Jesus. Second thing that we notice here about how we respond is what Simon Peter's mother-in-law does. We know that the process, which is point number three, spoiler alert, will happen, but we don't know when it will happen. So here in the story, we see these events happening, that the request is made, Jesus heals, and Simon Peter's mother goes and responds. However, what matters is not our response to Jesus after the healing. It is throughout the healing. 
And so the healing might be that we have given up the problem immediately to Jesus. There, I trust you right now that part of the problem is holding on to the problem. It's owning it, it's lamenting it, it's sitting in it, and it's denying Jesus that is a problem. And so that's why that first step is so, so important. If you hold on to the problem, Jesus cannot heal. If you do not let your requests be known to God, if you do not open the door, knock and seek, Jesus cannot heal because you're not inviting him into the problem. But if you can, if you can seek Jesus and you can find the healing, then you will be released from the problem. That in itself is healing. You may not receive it, but by releasing the authority of the problem to Jesus, the healing can begin because you're no longer going to the problem. If, if you are a human and you are seeking healing and you go to yourself, you cannot receive the healing. It may not be that you cannot perform it, but you need the person that can dance with you in the dance. You need to be able to pray with Jesus. You need to be able to not perform a miracle. It is not a performance. It is a relationship, it is a dialogue, and it is a concept only accessible through Jesus Christ. In Christ Jesus, we are set free from the law of sin and death, Romans 8 verse 2. And so it's only in Christ Jesus that we can live out a life of freedom so that we can remove the obstacles in our way. And if that is the towel behind you, there's a distraction on the fan. And you need to get the fan flowing so that the air in the room can circulate. You can then find freedom because your air is being circulated to perform that miracle. Because you've invited Jesus to fan the healing into your room. You can receive the healing when you are praying and in dialogue with Christ Jesus. Hence why today I wanted us to come into this conversation through communion. And so that second point is how Simon Peter's mother responds. And so first of all, we must seek to approach and come to the healer. Second point, we must respond likewise to the healing. It said in verse 31, Jesus went to her. You've enacted Jesus. He's coming to you. And taking her by the hand, Jesus holds your hand. He walks alongside you. He comes beside you. Lord, go before me, behind me and be with me. Be my paraclete. Come alongside me into my life so that I can seek this healing. And Jesus comes alongside her, holds her hands and he raises her up from her bed. He's healed in in giving people healing through sickness. He's healed in ways of bringing healing the hair from a fever and raises her up. And then it says, the fever left her. Just hold that for a moment. The fever left her. The illness, the problem. You went to the healer. He has now released you from the ownership of that problem. He's released you from that illness or infirmity because Jesus is healer. And she began to serve them as guests. She was sick. She had a fever. She was healed immediately. But she responded likewise immediately to serve. Jesus is the ultimate servant. He showed us that through the last message I shared. When he served the disciples, he washed their feet. The most humbling of acts. He gave his life on the cross to die for us. Jesus is a servant. He is a friend. He is a healer. And so in response, Simon Peter's mother-in-law began to serve them as her guests. And so that was an immediate response. And that's why a second, we first of all have to give up the problem and give it to Jesus. And then we have to respond 
by welcoming Jesus into our lives, by being hospitable, welcoming Jesus into every area of our life, even our deepest, darkest moments. And then, and only then, can Jesus perform the miracle. Perhaps it's not a performance, perhaps it is the miracle itself. And maybe you need to hold on to Jesus. Maybe you need to hold your cross, or maybe you need to hold it as a stone, or maybe you need to hold it as a squeezy scrunchy, or maybe you need to read it in a devotion or read it in the Bible. Whatever it is that you use, I encourage you, when you first became a believer, or if you are becoming a believer, there are various ways in which Jesus can speak to you. There is no limitation to how Jesus will appear to you. And in this particular passage, we find that Jesus meets us as healer. So those three points again, just to recap before I close and pray. Firstly, when you have a problem, go to the healer, release it, lay it down at the foot of a cross. When I was living in London, I was at an event where I was to receive some training, but the training I received was not from the pulpit, from the trainer. It was from the person that was sat behind me who spoke to me and said to me, have you given it to Jesus? And it was a very simple thing, and it was a very major movement. It was just such a simple perception of the problem that I'd missed. And so what that friend did for me was to change my perspective. But by changing my perspective, it changed my life. And so by being able to release our problems to Jesus, it changes our perspective and it releases the ownership, the authority for the Holy Spirit to come into our lives, to replace that doubt and fear. The Lord did not give us a spirit of fear or anxiety or cowardice, but of power, love and a sound mind. And it's in that where Jesus appears. It is in that moment where we can receive healing from Jesus as healer. Number two. Simon Peter's mother-in-law surrendered in response to the healing. She was able to become a receiver of healing, but she was also then able to serve. Jesus served by performing the miracle. Simon Peter's mother responded by serving others. We are called to respond to our giving up of our ownership over our healing by serving others. We receive the healing, we then reciprocate that by sharing it with others. The hope that you have, you receive with others. As we pray, as we seek, as we find healing, we are to respond by offering it to our friends and other communities. And then part three, Jesus is healer. He will come alongside you, go before you, behind you and with you and heal you if you respond in these ways. So briefly, give your prayers, your healing requests to Jesus. Respond as a servant and let Jesus heal you. Last pray. Father God, we thank you that your son Jesus came to heal us all, to release us from sin and bondage, that we may have eternity with you. And so right now, Lord, we just invite you back into our lives, that you would come by the power of your Holy Spirit. And that if we are either repeating this prayer, either silently or aloud, that you would come into our lives. Be our paraclete, be our healer, be our Jesus. Dear Jesus, come into my life. Release me from all sickness, illness or infirmity, physically, mentally, socially or spiritually. And give me a new life. I surrender all to you. And ask you to be my Lord and Saviour. In Jesus name. Amen. So may God's peace be with you. And may his face shine upon you. This Easter tide. In Jesus name. Amen. Go in peace guys. Bye for now.